First uh, Timothy chapter six. Uh, First Timothy chapter six. There's so much there, but I would just read uh, um, verse six. First Timothy six six. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in distraction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and fall after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And then he goes on to say, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, there are lots of things here, but my attention was drawn to the scripture here in verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great. Godliness with contentment is great gain, you know. Uh, when we turn to the book of Psalm 37, uh, I'd like to just read, if you don't mind, just before we turn to Psalm 37, I would like to just read this scripture uh, of First uh, Timothy from uh, the Amplified Bible. Uh, yeah. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance, in everything, by prayer and petition. Uh, sorry, I'm reading a wrong scripture. Uh, yeah, verse six. And it is indeed a source of immense profit for godliness accompanied with contentment. That contentment, which is a sense of inward sufficiency. That contentment, which is a sense of inward sufficiency, is great and abundant gain. I would like to read that again. And it is indeed a source of immense profit for godliness accompanied with contentment. That contentment, which is a sense of inward sufficiency, is great and abundant gain. That sense of inward sufficiency is great and abundant gain. It is self explanatory, and uh, I'm sure the Holy Spirit can really speak to us from that. With that, we'd like to turn to the book of uh, Psalm. Psalm 37 and verse 16. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. You know, so one thing that I would like to gain. I'd like to read from uh, the Amplify, the same portion. Please bear with me. Yes. Better is the little that the uncompromisingly righteous have 
Better is the little that the uncompromisingly righteous have than the abundance of possessions of many who are wrong and wicked. Of many who are wrong and wicked. So one thing I perceive from this scripture is, uh, is also, uh, let me just read from another translation. It is better to have little and be right than to have much and be wrong. Uh, that's New Century Version. Uh, I'd like to say one thing, one or two thoughts here. One thing I was able to perceive from uh, these scriptures was this. The true godliness brings true contentment. You know, true godliness brings an inward sufficiency within us. And such ones live a life you know without fear and without tension and anxiety today in the world we see many live with a kind of anxiety tension and fear but when we have that inward sufficiency you know and the and, and the secret i believe as i see this scripture is you know, contentment comes from the principles of godliness. You know, just saying, you know, uh, contentment with godliness is a great gain as a scripture doesn't bring contentment. But contentment comes to us or inward sufficiently, sufficiency comes to us by walking in the principles of godliness. You know, by walking in the principles of godliness. I don't mean, I did not, I, I don't mean to take a long time with us and, you know, but just, you know, uh, that thought, contentment can only come when we live by the principles of godliness. Now, that's where Many find it difficult. You know, we thank God for the testimony our brother shared. You know, we are living in a world, as we have seen, it's a, a world of materialism. Um, a world with many, many, many ideas, how to invest money, where to put our money, where to multiply our money. The best place to multiply money is in, in possessions. So there are many ways people of the world are caught up with, but for us, the scripture is very clear. If we want to live with that anxiety, fear, you know, and tension, that inward sufficiency with what God provides for us, that's the best thing as we walk in the principles of God in us. Uh, I would like to turn also one more scripture uh, that's found in the book of uh, Philippians. Chapter four, as I said, you know, that inward sufficiency comes by walking in the principles of godliness. And here is a great challenge from a man of God whose name is the Apostle Paul. And I would like to turn to Philippians chapter four. As I said, the principles of godliness alone can bring contentment in anybody's life, in anyone's. And here is a Words that really challenges me and challenges all of us if you are really open to God. And um, so we would like to turn to that scripture in Philippians chapter 4. And I'm reading some verses 10. To me. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last you care, your care of me hath flourished again wherein ye were also careful, but ye lack opportunity. You lacked opportunity. But that I speak in respect of want, 
for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound, how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed, I'm instructed, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer in need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. How often people take only verse 13 and boast about what they can do. But Paul says that in the realm of a life of contentment. Verse 13 is many a time taken out of context. I can do all things and do they want to do mighty things for God in the name of God. But Paul says that in the context of living a life of contentment, you know, walking in the principles of, you know, godly principles. And um, I would like to read that from another translation, which is very enlightening. Uh, J.B. Phillips translation to begin with. Uh, it has been a great joy to me that after all this time you have shown such interest in my welfare. He's writing to the church in Philippi. I don't mean that you had forgotten me, but up till now you had no opportunity of expressing your concern. No nor do I mean that I have been in actual need. For I have learned to be content. I have learned to be content. Whatever the circumstances may be. I know how to live when things are difficult. And I know how to live when things are prosperous. In general and in particular. I have learned the secret of facing either plenty or poverty. I am ready for anything through the strength of the one who lives within me. Uh, this is what he says in the Amplified. So as I said, contentment comes from, you know, living in the, the principles or walking in the principles of godliness. And here is a wonderful, tremendous, challenging example of the Apostle Paul himself. I would like to read uh, from another translation. One more translation. <clears throat> and this new century version again. I am very happy in the Lord that you have shown your care for me again. You continue to care about me, but there was no way for you to show it. I'm telling you this because I need, because I need anything. I have learned to be satisfied with the things I have and with everything that happens. I know how to live when I am poor, and I know how to live when I have plenty. I have learned the secret of being happy. I have learned the secret of being happy at any time in everything that happens. When I have enough to eat, and when I have, I go hungry. When I have more than I need, and when I do not have enough, I can do all things through Christ because he gives me 